Hi, right, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. We are on the, I think, I believe today is Daf Nun Ches. Uh, we left off on Nun Zion. So uh, we're moving along, try to officially catch up. Uh, today is, Baruch Hashem, not as bad as yesterday. So those of you who had difficulty today, it's a good thing we start with the new Mishnah and new beginnings. Every, every Daf is its own page, it's its own world. And therefore, you know, if, if something yesterday didn't work out, so Mir Hashem, something today will. Fine. Mishnah says, Noisnin Karfev Le'ir Diva Remeir. Says Remeir Chiddush. We're in the Mishnah, excuse me, and then Zayin Amad Aleph, smack in the middle of the page, and Amad Aleph. So Noisnin Karfev Le'ir Diva Remeir. According to says Remeir, you give a Karfev. The Karfev we, we mentioned is a measurement of 70 and two thirds, right? Where does the 70 and two thirds come from? As we mentioned before, the uh, courtyard in the base of Mikdash was, uh, or by the Mishkan, right? It was uh, 50 by 100. 50 times 100 is 5,000. 5,000, so if you have a square of that, we'll actually see the source today, a square, the square root of 5,000 square amos, basically the same size courtyard as opposed to being rectangular shaped, but rather than a square, would be each side is 70 and two thirds, approximately, by 70 and two thirds, and that is called the, uh, the distance of a carpet. So says Rameyer, when we measure the 2,000, you actually don't measure out from the edge of the town. You measure out, you have actually an additional 70 and two thirds, and then you go ahead and all the measurements that we've been describing till now. However, now the only time we discuss the uh, carpet is not what we're talking about measuring out, you know, the tchum to go out. Rather, we're talking about you have two towns. If they are close enough within a carpet, right, 70 and two thirds, then it's not called each town. We don't measure from here, you know, 2,000 this way, and then from here, 2,000 this way. Rather, it's like one big town. So therefore, the only measurement is here going that way, and then here going this way. In other words, but the, in between, it's all considered like one large, uh, one large city. And the Chavim say, so we have a Chavim Ben Shdi, so in other words, they say, Lord, I'm a Chavim Ben Shdi, right? Im yesh lezu shivim amot the shirayim, u lezu shivim amot the shirayim, if on the one, let's say the twin cities, right? So one city, uh, the city on the east has 72 thirds, and the city in the west, you go 72 thirds towards one another. In other words, basically, we'll soon see this, 141 and a third, that's going to be the important number, whether it's two carpets or one carpet, right? So the chayr over here, chayr say, we, so you, between two cities, if this one has 72 thirds, and the other one has also 72 thirds. Oh, you said carpet, ashtayim, therefore you put a carpet in the middle, ashtayim, liyais, echad, in order to be one. So therefore, basically, you go ahead and say, hey, as long as there are basically 140 amos or less in between them, then uh, you can say they're connected as one. V'chein, gimel, kfarim, so too, you have, let's say, three villages, three towns. Ha'meshulashen, there are three in a row. We'll soon explain this in the Gemara. Im yesh bein shtayim echitzayinim mea ve'arba ve'achat. If you have from the outer ones that are within 141, v'shlish on a third, asim tayi eshlash tan liyais achat. Then you basically have the, 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 the city in between, basically connects them as long as you have uh, 141 in between them, and we'll also we'll have to explain this case, and we'll redefine this case. So I don't want to sort of explain the Havmina, as the Gemara will uh, come on to this case. So let's see the Gemara. First, we have the opinion of Remeir, says when you go ahead and measure out, you measure first the Karapay, and then you measure your 2,000. So, Mina Hani Mili, Amarav, Demarkar, the Pazik says, Mikir Ha'ir V'chutza. It says from the wall of the city and outwards, Amratara, Tein Chutza, V'charkach Me Amad, it says, go outside and then measure. Now, go outside, 72 thirds, and then go ahead and measure. And the Chaim say, no, we don't say Karpe, but go ahead and just in a straight shot to go ahead and, uh, and measure the 2,000. Rather, they say Karpe is only used for something, let's say, in between two towns. So, Itamar Rav, Huna Amar, nice thing, Karpe, Flazu, the Karpe, Flazu. So the machlok is as to what the shita of the chachamim is. So if you have two towns, the distance in between. So it says Rav Huna, you give a karpev to one and a karpev to the other. In other words, it has to be 141 in between them. If it's basic, if it's 100 in between them, then it's considered to be like one town. And chia barav omar karpev echa l'shtehe. No, no, it's 70 and two thirds between the two city. If it's less, if it's more than 72 thirds, then nothing i.e., so if it was 100, it's already considered to be too far, right? So the clear machlag is between Rav Huna and Chia Barav would be, there's 100 in between two towns, whether it's considered to be like one town and you, you only measure from the outer edges, or basically it's considered to be two independent towns and each one has its own measurements of 2,000 in each direction. 
So tonight, let's look at a Mishnah to see uh, about this machlokas between Rav Huna and Rav Chia. So Tanah, our Mishnah says, They only said uh, a single karpef, right? Ella ben shtei iras between two cities. So I tuked to the Rav Huna. It sounds like the Kashi Rav Huna. It sounds like he only gave one karpef in between two cities. So Rav Huna, my karpef. What does it mean when it says you put a karpef in between? It means Torah's karpef. It means the concept of karpef, which is multiple, uh, which is two. Each one gets its own measurement of karpef. The other karpef lazu, the karpef lazu. Each one gets its own karpef. I.e., each one gets a measurement of seventy and two thirds. As long as those come with one uh, overlap. Then it's good. And Hachinami Mustavi, this is also logical to say. Big Tani, Seva Bethek, this says in the Seva, Im Yesh Lazu, Shivim Amma, Vishirim Lazu, Shivim Amma, Vishirim. If this one has, because we said in the mission, if this one has 72 thirds, another one has 72 thirds, or 70 and extra, 70 and extra, right? Isa Karpev Lashem, then we make a Karpev. We make a Karpev, it's all considered a one, but it says clearly that each one you measure 70 and two thirds, so you get a total of 141. to be one. So Shmami no. So that indeed, you see our Mishnah is Mashma that each one, when there's two towns, each one gets in between them uh, their own 70 uh, and two thirds to equal 141. So lema to you to yufta to chia barav. So let's say it's a kash. So let's say it's a tiyufta. It's a bam kash. It's a, it's a proof against chia barav that he's wrong. It's to say that when there's two towns, you only get one karpe. So machav chia barav. So chia barav say ha mani. Whose opinion is this? This is Rav Meir. He. This is the opinion of Rav Meir. See so, Rav Meir. He ha tanali reisha. We already said the, the sheet. Remember Rav Meir said in the sheet of the reisha. You give one karpe. So he said, oh, wait, oh, so over here, it means each town gets its own carpe because you always give a carpe even when we're measuring 2,000 amos out. So all the time they raise, the ratio says, nice thing, carpe of the year. Where did they derive this measurement of uh, 70 and two thirds or 100? <laughs> right. So, so, yeah. so we're gonna, right. So, right. So the number 70 and two thirds, as it was soon going to, actually, we're go, we're, I'm going to answer this question. And uh, a little later, where we, where we get the number of 72 thirds. I'm going to answer, but uh, right, we'll, we'll get to that question. But let's just assume that that is the distance, right, of being part of the, of the same paper. area. Okay, we'll assume now because the Gemara is actually going to ask uh, and another question and it brings the source to this. Yeah. Now, so the Gemara said it was the opinion of Ram Mayer. So the Gemara says, what do you mean? Hot narration, nicely carved of the ear, Diva Ram Mayer. So but the mission already said each uh, a city gets a, a carpet, gets 70 and two-thirds. So why do you have to say it twice? So Gemara says, no, it's Tzricha. We need to say it twice, even according to the opinion of Chibar Rab. Dimi, hahi, if it was over there, have a mina chad l'chad of a chad l'tarti. Maybe over there, the, 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 uh, the halach is that that what you say in the beginning, that you give a carpet to a, to a town when we're going ahead and measure the tchum, meaning we always only give one carpet, even if it's between two cities. So Kamash Malan, the Latarti, Trayavinale. So it comes to teach you that now each city gets its own carpet, and therefore when you're measuring between two cities, each one gets uh, um, 70, uh, uh, each one gets 72 thirds according to our mayor. Um, and if you want to say over here that maybe went between two cities, then we give two. Right? Because over there, in between them, it's tough to go ahead and use the, uh, you know, the, use the, the, the external space because there's another city right next to it. So therefore, we at least give it, sev- each, each side gets 72 thirds. It gets its own space. But over there, with this, when, you, when you're the edge of a single town and when you measure out, so there's nothing out there, maybe we wouldn't even give it any other space at all. Aim alone. Therefore, I would say no. So therefore, he has to teach us twice, according to, according to the mayor, that you give a single city when you measure out its tchum. First, you give 72 thirds, according to the mayor, and then you count the 2,000. And also, according to this, other, the, this answer, that when you have two cities, each one gets its uh, 70 and two thirds. So Tanat, let's look at the next part of Mishnah. The Chain Shloisha Kfarim Hamashaloshim. Im Yesh Bain Shtai Machitzainim, Mea the Arboim Vachas, Amo Shlish, Isem Tsai, Eshloisha, and the Yosechad. So you have three cities, right? Lachari, you have three in a row, right? And if there is in between them, right, um, between the outer ones and the inner ones, 141. Right, i.e., each town gets this. Right, so these are the three towns. So, between all right, right, between this one and this one, each one gets 70 and two thirds, and this one and this one, each one gets 70 and two thirds to be a total of 141 and change. So, then basically, they're all considered to be one, and it's one single village. So, Tamadi, I'm sorry, Hall, like I'm sorry, 
So it sounds like the only reason why they're all considered one is because there's a middle one. That's why each side gets its uh, 72 thirds, but there's not. Then they wouldn't get. So Tiyup to Rav Huna is be a cash in Rav Huna, right? Because according to Rav Huna, um, he would say that the only reason why it's, they are all considered together is not because of their, it's 141, but because there's a city in between. But it sounds like if there was no city in between and it was just 141 with, uh, within one another, right? Then we would say that's too far apart. Well, what do you mean? According to Rafuna, if two cities are 141 apart, then it's considered to be one. Well, over here, it's saying the only way the two outer cities are considered to be one is if you have a, a city in between. So it sounds like if you have a very narrow city, let's say that's like 60, right? And then you have an each side is, is, is 40, right? Which is actually a total of 104, which is less than 141, right? The only reason why you'd say it's connected is because it's a city in between. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. But according to Rav Huna, if it's less than 141, it should be connected. That, 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 city, that new city in between does not interrupt the 70 and, and two thirds from the original city? Right. So over here, no, you need that city to connect them. So it sounds like that you normally only get 70 and not 141, right? So that's the cash over here on Rav Huna, right? I mean, no, we, we, we still have the Havamina uh, as, as this is the meaning. We're going to actually completely change the meaning of about what we're saying. So Amr Lecha Rav Huna, so says Rav Huna. So how it's my law, I'm a rabbi, 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 it doesn't mean one, two, three in a row. Ella, rowing kol she'ilu matil em tsai b'nehem, the yuma shalashim, the ain b'en ze le ze ele me'av arba im ama ba'achas ashlish, as em tsai es shloish dan liyosecha. In other words, like this. Picture, it's shaped more like a triangle. And you have the two outer ones, okay? And now, if you would go ahead, and the, uh, the third one's all the way in front, right? If you would basically insert it, if you, if you would bring it over, that it goes in between, and now if you magically bring it in between and it's within 141 of each side, now it's considered to be, the, the triangle is considered to be one town. So in other words, it's not that we look at it, it has to be in between. It's further away, right? There's actually a picture. On, uh, uh, here, let me show this picture right here on 57B2, uh, right? So you have a picture over here, right? See this picture? You, you have the three towns, one, two, and then here's the third town. So this town, as long as if you would move it over, right, you, you would move it directly over to the other, uh, in between the other towns, and if this, the gap in between is less than 141, right, then it's considered to be one. Now this triangle is all considered to be one single town. And, and, so the, and, that, and, and, those, and that's how you understand that, that case of Shloshtan. And it's not independent. It's only if you have the town in between, then you connect it to 141. No, 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 no. It's, it's a bigger, bigger finish than that. It's the, even if the town is farther away, you move it as if it was in between. And then if the two towns would not be far enough, then it's all considered to be one. But Yolo, right. Yolo, yeah. how far does that third town have to be uh, from the question, other? Good, a very good, good question. Go on, uh, ask on it right now. You're right. So I'm going to go over there. So Kami Hei Ben Chitzel Nehem Tzai, right? How far does it have to be? So I'm going exactly your question. Al Pai Mama, up to 2,000 Amos. I have a heart with them of Avaha as the Marta, Kabasi, the Rafa Bereid, the Rafa, who know me stuff, or the Amir Yasin Al Pai. Now, those of you who remember that we learned before Sukkot, Right, that if we had a case of a um, a town shaped like a bow or a rainbow, right? We call it the rainbow. The uh, the, the Gemara calls it a, a, you know like a bow. So it's rounded, and we said the whole rounded part, right? The area, like the the half circle, right? If you look over here, this picture over here, right, can't be more than two thousand. So what do you mean? You, Excuse me, it said it could be more than 2,000 over there, right? So wait, you just said that the third town can't be... Now, if you really think about it, it's sort of like a little rainbow going on here because you have, you know, the two bottoms and you have the city that's the outlier, which is on top, and you were bringing it down. So it's sort of like a bow. And over there, we said it could even be more than 2,000. It could be farther away and consider the whole area filled in as, as one town, you know, when there's houses like that. So over here, why, what's the difference? Why over here is the, are we maximized to say only 2,000, but over there not? So we answers. So First of all, it's different. Over there, we said the reason why it could be even more than 2,000 is because we don't just have 
a city here or houses here in a village here, houses here in a village here, and then houses all the way on top here, and it has to be 2,000. Over there, we have houses throughout. There are houses throughout the entire way. So since there are houses connecting, we don't care if the arch is, is more than, less than 2,000 or even more than 2,000. It, would, it was considered to be one. We said over there, okay, how much does it have to be from the from the outer ones? So understand when you're asking how far are these are from each other, it could be thousands of amos, as long as if you take the, the city, which is less than two thousand, put it in between, and be, the, 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 the different the, the space between the two cities are less than one forty one. So how are you asking, you know, how much can it be? Whatever the city is in between. Right, whether it's you know ten thousand amos or or, or or five hundred amos, right? As long as it fills in the gap where the two open spaces are less than one forty one. So Gemara says, "V'yafilu arba'is al pay mama." So even uh, two, even four thousand amos says, "Amar la'in." He says, "Yeah, I have amar avuna ir hasu v'kakeshes." Go back to the case before a city that was made like a kashes, like a bow. Uh, we say over there, if in the case of the cache of the rainbow, now the, in, in addition to having a maximum space between the, you know, the arch, right, and the bottom, we also created a space between the two ends. We says as long as those are within four amos, uh, four four thousand amos, because each one two thousand amos, it's considered to be filled in between. But if it's farther than four thousand amos, it wouldn't work. So why over here, if we say that the town, the two towns, the outer towns, can be even ten thousand amos, why is it considered to be connected? Right? Wouldn't it be the same? W- w- isn't it the same difference? Over there, it's different. In that case, right, where once it's spread apart, right, there's no way to go ahead and fill the middle, right? We only were able to fill the middle because it was less than 4,000 if each one was 2,000 in between. But once it's more than 4,000, you don't have anything in between. Therefore, there's no way to fill in between. As opposed to our case, when we look as if the city is over there, then the city is there, and therefore the city is is what that fills the space. And therefore, it's not an issue of it being even more than 4,000 amos in between. And Amr Le Rav Safra the Rava says Rav Safra the Rava Hare Bnei Akis Tefun the Mishach Lehu Tehuma Mehagisa De Ar Desher Right You have the people of um, what is, uh, uh, the people of Akis Tefun and they used to go ahead and basically they would share a their their Tehum with the people on the other side of uh, of a river of uh, Ardashir. And the people from the other side, they would go ahead and bring their, they, you know, they would, the, the two cities would include each other. But well, what's the problem with that? Right, you have the, the Tigris River. That was more than 141 wide. So if you have the Tigris going in between more than it's more than 141, you can't say there's you know seven on each side. So how are they connected? It's more than 141. How can you go ahead and span the Tigris if it was wider? So Goran says, no, nothing So then Rafa, when he was asked this question from Rav Safra, he went out and he showed him Hanich at Mahasa the Shura. If you go ahead and come with me, I'll show you. There's still older walls. I guess the, the river, you know, increased over time. And there's still older walls, older structures that one could potentially also live in. That's why it's included. They were actually in the water. So since the, it wasn't like it spanned up until the water. It was even including the water where there was basically walls and structures into the water. And therefore, the, the, the space between the two structures in the water from each side was less than 70. And therefore... Right, that's the reason why these two towns on the two opposite sides of the Tigris River were considered to be one. Fine, Naya Mishnah. Mishnah says we are four lines from the bottom on Nun Zayin Amud Beis, which is the end of yesterday's blot. Ein moededin ela bechevel shel chamishim amo lepachos v'lo yeser. We saw yesterday that um, one cannot measure with a, a rope. Right, which is uh, uh, one should right one should only measure with a rope of fifty amos, not more, not less. 
and when you hold it, right, one should not hold it, let's say, on top, and the other person holding it down there, because then you lose distance, rather, each one should hold it by its heart, and therefore, you make sure the, the, the rope is exactly 50 amos parallel to the, uh, to the ground. And if they went, basically, and now they're measuring, and there's a valley, or there's a fence, what do they do? They basically, mavlio means like they swallow it up. In other words, they basically, they hold it over, they go over the valley. They don't go, you know, add the distance, you know, to the land where it goes down or where it goes up, because then you'll lose distance, right? If you have something exactly 50 and it's all, you know, up and down, then you're going to, it's, you're going to, uh, you're going to lose some distance. So therefore you basically uh, overrule it. And the same thing, if you come to a mountain or a hill, mavlio v'chayz so. Uh, so too, you go ahead and uh, you measure the so you measure it straight. Ubilvad, however, when you go ahead and, and, and you measure it, uh, you go to the next page. When he's measuring, you should not go out uh, because if people see him go out to the chum, then they, they won't be uh, familiar. So therefore, they should not go out to the chum, to outside the chum, to go ahead. And when they measure it, because it knows if you're going sideways, you know, other side, because let's say there's some sort of physical structure in the way, and they go around there, they shouldn't go outside. Let's say, but it's too steep and it's too long in order to basically, you know, you stand on that side and I'll stand on this side, hold the rope 50 amos, and then we'll basically, you know, and then we'll just continue from that 50 amos, you know, to the next measurement of 50 amos. So, right? We look as if we pierce the mountain. We don't physically uh, pierce the mountain, rather, right, we say that if you look at this picture over here, right, this, uh, this is a nice picture, right, um, that you basically you go ahead and you take the 50, uh, the 50 amos rope and you measure it to the ground straight ahead, so it's parallel to the, you know, it's parallel to, I guess, sea level or to the ground, and you go across your heart, and then the next one, you start from there, and the person stands there and does the same uh, until, you know, they basically are able to ascend the mountain. So you, you never, you know, put the rope on an angle. It's always straight. And if you have to do a straight into the mountain, and then you just, you know, stop on top, start on top here, and then continue from there. So that was the Mishnah. So first, the Gemara says, Minohani Mili, how do we, where do we see this from? They use rope. All right, where do we get this halacha from? You should use a 50 amos rope. So Minohani Mili, Amarav Yehuda, Amarav, says Rav Yehuda, Amarav, the Amr Akra, the Pasuk says, The length of the, the Chatzar of the courtyard was 100, right? Amma, and its width was 50. It was 50 by 50. What does it mean 50 by 50? Right? Now, it's with the rope of 50, you go ahead and measure. That's what it means. Why I say 50, width, 50 by 50 is the width to tell you that you measure with a 50. So this is the source of measuring with a 50 amma rope. So Gemara says, Haman boyle, lito chamishim l'savi chamishim. Right, so now this addresses sort of uh, Eddie's question, right? Where do you get this carpe? What does what number 72 thirds? So it says, no, no, that when it tells you, the reich of chamishim chamishim, it's telling you it's a square of 50 by 50, right? It doesn't mean a square by 50 by 50, rather it means that you take basically, there's a square of 50 by 50, another square of 50 by 50, of two total squares of 50 by 50, which makes it 50 by 100, is the total uh, area, surface area of the courtyard. And if you would take that of, of a distance of chamishim by chamishim, in other words, make it a square, make it the, the width and the length to be the same, just like a 50 by 50 square, the, right, the, the length is 50 and the width is 50, so to make another square of the same size as the courtyard, that number as is basically the square root of square root, as some say, or square root is five thousand. Uh, a square root of five thousand is seventy and two thirds. So therefore, that was where we get the number of seventy and two thirds uh, to mention uh, as a carpet. So they're going to ask. So don't we already okay. use this? Wait, what they said? The length was a hundred, correct, and the width was fifty, right? A hundred fifty. That's five thousand. Correct. But then okay. why does it say, but why does it say, Verocha Chamishim Bechamishim? So there's a drusha to teach you, right, that Chamishim Bechamishim, I say 50 by 50, it should have just said, Arach HaChatzer Mea Be'ama Verocha Chamishim, right? 
The Kona Chamesh Amos. Why does it say, Verochab Chamishim Bechamishim? 50 by 50, right? To teach you that you should square the area and that distance, right, is, 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 is the number 70 and two thirds. And that's where we get the number of 70 and two thirds. To be, a, to be considered to be chash, be, be part of an area, part of the courtyard, part of an area which is extended. So if we were to use the drush of chamishim b'chamishim, how can you use it again to teach you the, 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 uh, for a rope? Let's say chamishim chamishim. What's my chamishim b'chamishim? Shema menotarti. Therefore, you learn both, both drushes, both that you, you square it and then you find out what the, you know, what, what the length is of the sides which is 72 thirds, and also that when you measure, you measure with a 50 amos rope. So, lo pachos, lo yeser, not more, not less, why not? So, tan, lo pachos, me shamar, but if you short, then each one, you'll basically pull it really tight if it's basically a shorter rope, and therefore, it might not be 20 amos, it might be 20.05 amos, and therefore, every time you use it, you'll actually add length, and therefore, we don't want to add length. However, lo yeser, but not more, because me might, because if you have a rope, which is 100, Right or even or longer than fifty, you can't pull it uh, completely. It might, maybe it might not be as tight, and therefore it might be a little bit lag. And therefore, you basically shortening the distance. So therefore, use fifty, not more, not less. And Amma Rabbi Asi, af sikima, af sikima. Well, you only use the rope of af sikima. So my af sikima, Amma Rabbi uh, Abba Nargila, it's Nargila. And my Nargila, some Rabbi Yaakov, Dikla Dechad Navra, right? It's basically a palm tree with a vine that goes around it. That vine is a, is a like basically a tight rope and use that. And Nikadami, some have a different version. My Askima, some say was Askima, Rabbi, Rabbi Abba, Omer, Nargila, Nargila, so it says Rabbi Abba, Nargila is one type of rope, and which we don't know. And Rabbi Yaakov, Amar, and Rabbi Yaakov says, Amar Dikla Dechad Navra. That one says it's a, basically a vine. So a vine that goes around a palm tree. So according to this interpretation, Nargila is not the vine that goes around the, the palm tree. And the other opinion is, it, it is the vine that goes around the palm tree. So Tanya, we learn in the Raisa, Omar Rav Yeshua ben Chananya, Ein Lecha, Shiyafa Lamida Yaisim, Shashel Shel Barzal. You know what the best way to measure is? A metal chain. Metal chain is not going to go ahead and, you know, over time, you know, lengthen or shorten. But what can you do? But it says the Torah says, you can go ahead and in his hand should be a rope to go ahead and measure. So it says, I in his hand should be a measuring stick. So it says, no, hold the Tari. That is referring to uh, Tari is referring to Sharim, referring to gates, right? The gates, shorter measurements, you use a stick, but anything longer, such as 2000 Amas, we're not using sticks. Rather, we use um, the ropes. And Tani, Rav Yosef, Shleisha, Chavol, and There are three types of ropes or, that are used, that are mentioned. So Shel Magog, Shel Netzer, Shel Pishtim. Right? One is made of reeds. One is made of uh, uh, branches, right? Of willow branches. And another one is made of Pishtim, right? Uh, as of linen. So Shel Magog, Lepara. Of Magog, that rope is used for the, the Paraduma. Now, it's not necessarily used to measure. It's, it's, measure, it's used to tie. It's not we learn in the Mishnah. Says, uh, so after you go ahead and you shech the paraduma, you don't want to go, you make sure not to get a uh, tame. So they basically tie with a rope of reeds, which cannot become tame, and therefore and place that on the, uh, on the fire and the mizbeach in order for it to burn. But they basically they don't use, uh, they use the type of rope uh, from reeds, so it doesn't become tame. And shall not serve the and they use a rope from the willow. For a sota detnan, right uh, over there by by the sota, we, we we tear her garment, and however we don't want her garment to, to be loose fitting or fall down, and therefore we basically we tie it up, uh, you know, uh, uh, closer to her neck, uh, we we tie it up, and now we use a rope of uh, made from chevel uh, hamitzri, right, from willow, and shall pishtan and of linen, then lamedida, right, for measuring, which is our case. So uh, over here. Um, that says basically we don't use a rope made from a vine. Rather, we use a vi- uh, rope from made from linen. Now, um, going back to what we just asked earlier, Haya right? So he says he was measuring and everything was good. It was flat land. You're in Chicago, but you know the area. You, you know the land is you know the hills and valleys. So let me just tell you, So what? Back that. Back the fact that says okay. Then you come back to the area where you left off. So Michal, the main yachol avliya, yehaylech l'makom shechol avliya, umavloi. 
Sounds like from over here, it says, then you go back to return to the place where you're measuring. Sounds like if I was measuring in this line, you know, straight ahead, and there's something in the way, and then I move over, you know, 20 feet to the right, where, you know, and I measure up, that's the same, and then measure back, the, you know, there, the 50 amos, and then I come back in my line, right? That's what it sounds like. You go there, you measure there, and then, you know, it goes over the space, and then you bring it back. Right and Tanina, we actually learned this a lot. The Tanina Rabbanu, we learned this in another brayso. It says, If he's measuring, he becomes to a valley. If he's able to go ahead, it's a short valley. It's only a forty-five amo valley, and he can go ahead and, and hold the string right straight across from one chest to the other chest and, and do that. Perfect. So you can do that. Mavlio, vim lav. If you can't, hoylech l'makom shech l'avlio. You should move to the side to a place where you can go ahead and go over that area. Or mavlio, then measure there. But seifet, then you look at back the other the line where you're measuring before. The chayz l'midasa, then return back to continue. You know, measure in uh, in fifty amos increments. Im hayagel meukam. However, if it was curved, makdir v'ayla makdir v'yoyved. Right. He goes ahead, and if it's too much, then that was the case of what we said, like the mountain, where you know you start from one area, and then you make sure it's straight, and then you start from the other area a little lower down, and then you go out that way, right? That was the case of uh, if he gets to a wall, you don't say basically the rope to the wall. Rather, he goes and estimates how thick the wall is. And then he uh, then he goes from there. So he doesn't no, he doesn't span the wall. Rather he goes from there. So he says buvad. Excuse me. Right. Put on the page. Aval chut. How much says over there? Aval. One second. Halach v'hot tanan eim avliu. So the says, what do you mean? Right. We say over here. Right. A. We we're not mavli a wall. V'chayz l'midaso. Right. We said. Excuse me. V'hot anan tanan. Right. So he said, one second, in the last place, right? We learned in the Mishnah that he does span it and he goes to the area where he did. So you just said he doesn't go ahead and, esti- and estimate. So Gemara says, no. Over there in a case where he's able to go ahead and he's able to, you, to, go, uh, to basically go around the fence and basically hold it over, that'll be fine. However, but in a case of where he's not able to go ahead and basically, you know, use the rope over the area, or over the fence that's broken, then he has to move to the side and measure from the side. And Amr of Yehuda, Amr Shmuel, finally says, Rabbi Shmuel, Lo Yishanu, Elo She'en Chut HaMishkolas Yerid Kinegdo, right? We're only talking about a place of where um, it is, um, we would not go straight down. Let's say you have a valley, right? And perhaps it is so steep right, that you can basically go ahead and take something, right, tie a weight to the end and let it go down. So the rope is now straight down. If it goes straight down by, by gravity and, it's, and, and you can go ahead and start from there, then you, uh, you, then you can start at that point. Over there, if we're talking about a case of where you could put a weight and it goes straight down and I see now basically where the point continues, if it goes and makes a 90 degree angle and all the way at the bottom, I can measure in the valley, then you go ahead and you do that and then you continue there. Otherwise, if it's a little more steep and when I drop it straight down, it doesn't go, fit, you know, it doesn't go straight down, then you would not go ahead and account from there. Rather, you'd be Mavlio, you would hold it in an area, either you pierce the mountain, as I said earlier, or if it was if it narrows in a certain area where it's less than 50 amos, then you measure it there and then you bring it over to where you're at. All right, we'll, we'll stop here. Everyone should have a wonderful day and enjoy the beautiful Cholomite weather. Shkayach Rabbi. Shkayach to you guys.